The complex fill unifill input method is a tool. It just has a few more steps and can do a few more things all at once. The traditional input method, a whole different video. You create the outline, you create a hole, entry, exit, stitch direction, and you're done. You can edit stuff back in later, but that's with the editing tools. With the unifill input method, you can do everything while you're creating the element. So with the unifill, you digitize the outline, you digitize any holes, and then you have the option of splices, which essentially creates subregions within the fill. And then you can put your entry point, your exit point, and then you can put in multiple stitch directions. And if you have splices in with those subregions, you can even have opposing stitch directions. So the unifill input mode is a way to create a complex fill that has subregions, has multiple stitch directions, and you do it kind of all at once. So here I have open fills.bmp and I have fills left over from the traditional input mode video. All of those fills we could digitize the same way with the unifill input method. I'm going to click and hold for half a second. It is over here. It has multiple stitch directions in it. If I want to digitize this square, I can do that. Let's do it in a different color this time. Let's use pink. And I'm going to digitize around this form, starting with a left click, just like all my digitizing tools. I'm going to hit enter to close this shape. And then it's asking for a hole. I don't have any. Now it's asking for a splice. Well, I could but I don't need to so I'm going to hit enter now it's asking for the entry point the exit point and the stitch direction that gave it stitches the tool is still selected I could give it another stitch direction if I wanted and have stitches kind of fan across the form you need to be careful with this you can get really crazy and create really dense areas but you can create gentle kind of waves throughout your design with this tool as you're digitizing you don't have to edit them in later when you want to be done putting in all your stitch directions you can hit enter again the tool stays selected you're ready to move on to your next fill but that fill is complete so what is a splice and why would i use it and why would i have subregions well i don't have a good reason for any of these shapes but let's look at columns.bmp and we'll look at these letters. In the column one and column two videos, we talked about the fact that the tool is no longer tied to the stitch type. So I can use pretty much any tool with pretty much any stitch type. It just depends on what kind of shape am I trying to create and how do I want to digitize it. The unifill is the most flexible tool. It can create subregions, keep everything in one fill, but have multiple stitch directions, opposing stitch directions, all of that in one shape. So it can lend itself well to creating letters like this. So if I select that tool, I can digitize this E. I'm just digitizing around the form. I'm holding Alt to constrain that line angle. I'm going to press Enter to complete that shape. Now it's asking for a hole. I don't have a hole in this E. I will use it for that A. But now I have a splice line. And so I hit Enter. It's asking for a splice line. I'm going to put a splice line in here because I would want this bar to have a vertical stitch direction and this bar to have a horizontal stitch direction. Well, I can't do that with a traditional fill, but I can with the unifill. So I'm going to press enter now that I've got the one in here. I don't need another splice. Now I'm going to say I want to start here. I want to exit say exit down here and then we'll give it stitch direction so I'm going to drag all the way across the form 
for all those little bits that I want vertical. And then I want to have a horizontal stitch direction here and here. Now let's change that stitch type to satin and let's look at it in 3D. And so now we've got one element, but it's got a subregion right here. So it's dealing with this bar differently than everything else. And you can have opposing stitch directions. If you have an element that has splices like this and you want a little more control, you want a little more overlap, you want to change the shapes of where this splice is, you can right click on it, go to operations and break the object. And that will break right on that splice line. So now I have two pieces. So if you wanted to increase that overlap, or change the order I want the, the middle bar to sew next, you'd obviously need to change your entry and exit points. But you could change the order, you can change when that stuff occurs, and you can change the shape itself. So let's, let's undo. So now we have this piece, but I want to bow this piece out, have the crossbar so last, and have it butt up against that, I can do all of that. So now I've changed the overlap, I've given myself that bump, just to give myself a little bit more stitching to overlap. Let's exit here. Let's start here to avoid that trim and let's exit right here. Give ourselves a full stitch on the end by right clicking with that stitch direction. Now I've broken that unifill and edited those shapes. Unifill is a very flexible tool and it can allow you to create all of those subregions. But if you don't like how it is working, you always have the ability to break it apart at the splices and have smaller fills to work with. Let's take a look at this A. This A does have a hole in it, and we're going to use that splice to create subregions for the crossbar. So I'm digitizing around the A, pressing enter to close the shape, and now I'm going to do the hole Pressing enter to complete the hole. Now, I don't have another hole, so I'm going to hit enter to go on to the splice. Here, I'm going to put in a splice here and here to section off that crossbar. I'm done with my splices. I hit enter. I want my entry point and my exit point. And then I'm going to drag my stitch directions where I want them. If I go across the top, I can create that cap. And then I need a stitch direction in every subregion. So I'm going to come down here, put that in. And now I've completed my A. I have opposing stitch directions. If I change that to satin, Go into 3D, we can have a better look at what this letter looks like. Let me zoom back out, and I think that looks pretty good. The complex fill unifill input mode, it can create great shapes with subregions. You can use that splice line to create those subregions with opposing stitch directions or multiple stitch directions, and you can edit them and keep them all in one shape. If it turns out that it's too complex or you don't like the way that you have it uh, ordered, you can always right click on it, go to operations and break object to break those larger, more complex shapes into simpler fills along those splice lines.